Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Malcontent Corner, the corner where I hope to enlighten your lives by sharing with you things I've learned in the course of mine. Now, one of the things I'm finding out as I get a little older is I become nostalgic for things that were around in my youth that I'm finding aren't quite so common today. Now, one of those things, as silly as it may sound, is the aluminum framed lawn chairs. They were quite ubiquitous in the 60s and the 70s, but here in the 21st century, I found that they were hard to get. Now, I happened to stumble across a couple in my garage. Uh, the frames were good, but the nylon webbing was shot. And, but I did some research and I found that there's a company called Lawn Chair USA based here in America that still makes these lawn chairs to this very day. Now, obviously, you're not going to go to your local hardware store and probably find them, although they may have them. Uh, but I bought a couple. I liked them so much, I ended up buying several for my friends as Christmas gifts. And while I could do a video about that, those products and their chairs, and I do highly recommend them, uh, I'm actually touching bases with you today with regards to a chair that I found, and that is this little gem dandy right here. Now this one I found by the side of the road. As you can see, the nylon's pretty much shot here. Uh, this is a newer one because it has the plastic armrest. Now, I've... Uh, taken some time and got on their website and I found that they have a rewebbing kit. Uh, yeah, can't really see that too well. There you go. Rewebbing kit comes with 50 feet of 3 inch wide uh, uh, webbing as well as the clips that you use on this kind of chair. Now those two aluminum chairs that I made mention of earlier, they're real old school because not only are they aluminum framed, but even the armrests are made out of aluminum. Now they use a different kind of webbing and a different kind of setup. They use screws to hold the webbing in and the webbing is a little narrower. I think it's like about two and a half. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna reweb this chair. Now this particular chair, like I said, I found it in front of uh, uh, somebody's house. It was just thrown out. I think they were waiting for the garbage man to pick it up and me being the constant scavenger that I am, I found it and thought, hey, that's pretty cool. I could probably fix it. So I'm gonna go through and fix this. Now I'm not gonna take you through step by step on how to do it. Uh, because it would make this video super duper long and I really don't feel like doing that to you but what I'll do is I'm gonna put in a couple of new straps and I'm gonna stop and film it show you where I'm at and kind of give you an idea on how to do this at least with this model chair and who knows maybe you'll find it of some use so sit tight and I'll be back here in a little bit with some of the headway alright see you soon Hey gang, welcome back to day two. Uh, weather's a little different today. I uh, got a different shirt on, and if you take a look, the chair has been rewept. Now I know if you're watching this video, you're probably thinking to yourself, "Well, that didn't show me a whole lot." And you're absolutely right. I had every intention of, sh of running a few strands of webbing and kind of showing you what I was doing, but unfortunately, when I tried doing that last night, it did not turn out very well. Part of that was, uh, well, part of that was due to uh, errors on my part and part of it was due to errors on another party's part. I'll cover that a little bit later, but all is not lost because I can still give you some pointers as to what to do if you're going to undertake a job like this. So I'm going to kind of take you through some steps of some of the components that they use to actually anchor the webbing to these chairs and then I'll kind of cover what I screwed up on and how you can do things a little bit different. So, coming up, connectors. Now I'm going to point at two that I've run into so far. I suspect they're pretty common with most of these chairs, but don't take this as gospel, okay? There's always a gotcha out there somewhere in the universe it seems. But with this chair that I just uh, re redid, it uses what I call a little T connector. And that T connector looks like this. Um, if uh, you happen to have a newer chair, I suspect they use these kind of connectors. Now, when you uh, put them on the actual chair itself, they look a lot like that from the bottom. The connectors in here, you really can't see it too well because it is wrapped around with the material. But uh, the main thing to note with that is that if this is the front or the top of your chair or the sides, like you know, uh, over here or the top, uh, the hole for that connector is 180 degrees on the opposite side from the front or the top. It's basically 180. So 
uh, it's not a big deal. I'm just pointing that out to you. Uh, it's, so I can't show you the holes because they're, this chair has been redone, but that's where those are. Now, the next type of connector is a little more old school. And uh, to do, show you that, I'm going to go back to my old school chair. I thought I had rewebbed both of these. I have two of these chairs with the aluminum armrest. But this one, the webbing's still good. So this is original to the chair. And if you take a look, they use screws to hold the webbing in place. And unlike, unlike the chairs that use the T-connectors where the holes would be about here. I don't know if you can really see my finger very well. The hole would be here. Well, the screws are... A, quite accessible although at an angle uh, when you're looking from the bottom so those are the two type of connectors now if you're revamping your chair um, and you have all the connectors reuse them uh, if I was going to reweb this chair with the screws I would reuse the screws because they're all in good shape and the same with the T connectors uh, so there you have it that's it for connectors Ah, the screw-ups. Let's talk about the screw-ups. Part of the screw-up was my fault because I made a rookie mistake. Uh, part of the screw-up was that I did something that uh, guys are usually yelled out for not doing is I read and followed the instructions. Now let's talk about my rookie mistake. Obviously, if you're going to replace your material, you have to know what length you need to cut that material. Uh, I did not think it through very well. I took a tape measure this I measured the frame right to left I came up with a number number 17 inches I cut my material and went forth well the screw up that happened was that uh, I didn't take into consideration that the material wraps around the frame so my advice to you is if you're going to undertake a job like this either take a good strand of the material off lay it out flat and measure it or make sure you have handy a cloth tape measure much like a tailor would use because you're going to measure from the hole around the frame around the frame on the other side to the hole uh, as I said earlier I measured 17 inches using the tape measure obviously that was way short because once I did it the right way using the cloth tape measure I came up with about 21 inches and that's why part of the reason why I stopped filming last night is in trying to lay out that first strand of webbing it was incredibly short now, the second screw-up that happened, uh, again, uh, was due to me following the instructions. Now, the instructions kind of come up with two different, two different aspects there with regards to this webbing. And uh, I think part of it really doesn't matter too much, but the second part is what really fouled me up. Now, what they tell you is if you're using the narrower two and a quarter inch wide webbing, that you're going to take your initial measurement, you're going to add three and a half inches to it, you're going to cut the material and work with it from there. And they tell you if you have the four or the three inch webbing, that you're going to add four and a half inches to your initial measurement and go from there. Now, that in and of itself probably isn't a big deal. Uh, it, that I don't think screwed me up so much. But what it did, what did screw me up is they tell you that whether you're using the screws or whether you're using the T-brackets here, you are going to take your end and you are now going to triangulate the material much like such. And then you're supposed to take this blunt end and force it through these layers of material and then re-web the chair. Well, I had a tough time re-webbing or forcing that uh, blunt end of the T-bracket through this uh, uh, layers of through the four layers of material here so what I did was I took a small Phillips screwdriver put a torch to it and just poked a hole in it thinking I was really crafty the problem came in though is that when you get to the other end starting is starting the material is easy you don't have to be very precise on that but finishing the material eh, it gets a little bit different uh, because you need it tight you can't have it loose so, uh, yeah, it really kind of bit me in the butt, and that's when I, another thing that forced me to stop and kind of re-look at what I was doing. So here's what I'm going to tell you. Uh, with regards to the triangle, or let me put it this way, if you, whether you're using wide or narrow webbing, which is entirely up to you, I believe usually the narrower two and a quarter inch webbing uses the screws. If you're using screws, you will want to triangulate the end like that. End of story. 
The reason for it is if you just have a straight end like that and you put a screw in this, the material is going to rip right around the screw shank. So you do want to triangulate it like such because it gives a lot of material around that screw shank so it's not likely to rip out. And I also wonder to a certain degree if triangulating it like such also gives a little bit of weight distribution to the material itself so that it, not all the all the pressure when you sit on the chair is put in one section. Uh, it kind of, I think it kind of distributes the load. Now when it comes to the other end of finishing the chair it's not that big of a deal because as long as you have enough material on there when you're using the screws and as I showed you on the chair the screws are very accessible. Well if your material is a little loose not a big deal. Just make your triangle a little larger and a little further down the line. You'll have a little bit more of a stub on the back, but that's okay. You know, you can you can really adjust it and get the material really tight on there. And the nice thing is, is the screws are pointed, so they'll find their they'll work their way through the material as you're screwing the screw uh, into the hole. So, you know, using the screws, which is what I did on one of the previous chairs, uh, you didn't have to be as precise with the measurement. You got to be a little more precise with the T-brackets though because that T-bracket, the uh, curved end that I was showing you right here, let me grab that bracket again, hold on. This has to fit into the hole in the frame like such. So you want some tension on it so that it's not likely to just drop out of the hole, but you don't, you know, you don't want it so tight that you got to fight like hell to get it in the hole. So. Here's what I ended up doing with this chair. You will probably have good success if using the T-brackets. Take your initial measurement, add four inches to it, not four and a half like they tell you. Then what you're going to do is you are not gonna fold the end. You're gonna cut the end using scissors. Again, don't use a box knife and cut in the end. That's why you end up with stringy stuff like this. Uh, if you use a box knife or a straight, a single edge razor blade, uh, you're gonna rip the material. So use uh, scissors. But you're gonna take that same small Phillips screwdriver that I showed you. You're gonna measure two inches down from the edge and poke a hole in the material like such. You're going to go to the other end of the material and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to measure two inches down from the straight edge and poke a hole in the material like such. Once you have your hole in there, you're going to take your T-bracket, you're going to insert it in the hole like such so that it looks like this on one side, looks like that on the other. Please notice how I have the bend of that T facing the length of the material, not the stub end. But you're just going to fold it like such, put it in the hole, and then you're going to wrap the material around the frame. Oh, ah! <laughs> like that. That's how it works. Now again, starting this isn't a big deal. It's real easy to start them, but finishing them is. So the nice thing about using the small Phillips screwdriver as opposed to a small straight edge is that if you find your material's a little loose, it's not a big deal. You can just go a little further up the material and poke a hole in it. Or you can go a, further, a little further down. For the most part, using the small Phillips screwdriver tends to part the webbing as opposed to ripping its way through the webbing. So that's the way you want to re-web the chair if you're using T-brackets at least with the three inch wide webbing. It went really smooth once I started doing that right. So again, take your initial measurement, add four inches to it, cut it, measure two inches in from each end and poke your hole. Now humans being humans, like I said, you, you might get a little bit off. It's okay, just re-poke the hole. Again, don't burn your way through this material, just use the Phillips screwdriver and poke your way through. Now, one of the tips I do want to give you in, in doing a chair like this is you may come up to a point where you're trying to finish off the material and you're going to find, hold on here, let me repoke the whole material here because I, I have done been playing with it and it closed up on me. It's a little bit like a earring. Uh, the, you'll find that if you work the webbing, the, the webbing will tighten back up again. If you find your, your material is just a little tight, just a little tight. You think you can get it in, but it's a little hard. Do not be inclined to take a screwdriver to the little crook here and try to force that into the hole. Okay? 
you will uh, more than likely rip the material if you do that. But what you do want to do is take your material, and because you have the little T here, you can grab it with your hand there. But you want to take your material and poke your screwdriver next to the the T section like such. And the reason for that is you can now use the screwdriver as well as your hand to pull the material taut enough to where this will drop into the hole. So again, use a small screwdriver once again, poke a hole in the side, pry it up, and you can drop it in the hole. Again, that's if it's just a little too tight. If you find you can't pull it quite, you know, tight enough to get this in the hole, you're probably going to have to stop and readjust the location on the material here. Now all said and done, uh, the job started going really smooth and that's why the chair's done and I didn't stop. Uh, I found a better resource for you, I will explain it to you at the video, uh, at the end of the video I should say, uh, that will kind of show you in better close-up details, way better than anything I could show you. But all said and done, it took less than an hour. And part of the thing that aided me was that I work on a sheet of plywood on a couple saw horses. So I just ran my initial measurement. Uh, I think uh, left to right was 21 inches and top to bottom here, going from the top all the way across the seat was about 40 inches. I could just measure it out on the plywood. I marked the plywood so then I could just run the material to that line and cut it. So it made cutting the material, you know, pretty quick, boom, boom, boom and putting it together went really super smooth. So, uh, you know, for an hour's worth of time and about 21 worth of, 21 bucks worth of stuff, I'm done. Now, part of the cost of that is uh, the fact that I needed those T-bracket. Uh, when I picked up the chair, it was missing one of the T-brackets. And unfortunately, if you want to do this job right, you need the correct uh, hard mounting hardware. You can probably f go to the hardware store and get a screw if you need that, but the T brackets are a little unique. You're not going to find them. So when I was on at launchair.com, um, launchairusa.com, I'm sorry about that, I not only picked up the material, I did pick up a bag of T brackets. Granted, it was a 30 pack bag, I only needed one uh, T bracket, but if you should find your chair is has a, old screws or screws that are rotten, rusty, crappy, or T-brackets that are mangled or whatever, or missing, go to LawnChairUSA.com. They do have webbing as well as the T-brackets and the screws. Now, as I said, in this case, I, uh, I got a chair for about 21 bucks. Uh, and the nice thing is, is I kept something out of the landfill. Now, if you happen to have a chair like this, instead of throwing it out, go to LawnChairUSA, take a look see what they have. They might have material on there that you like, they have the, the hardware that you can need, and you could probably do a job like this within an hour or two with your own labor. Carefully, of course, you don't want to hurt yourself. But even if you don't have a chair like this and you, you're looking, you're going, you know, that's kind of cool, it's retro, I might want one. Again, go to LawnChairUSA.com. They do offer new chairs too, and while they're not cheap, at current pricing's uh, somewhere between, uh, I think around 69 bucks for a chair, they do offer free shipping in the continental United States, and you'll actually end up with a very nice chair that is made here in the US. So again, LawnChairUSA.com, check them out, take a look and see what they have. They might have something you like. Anyways, that's what I have for you in this episode of Malcontent Corner. As always, I appreciate you listening to me talk. I hope you found this video of some use. And until we meet again, you take care of yourselves, and we'll catch you back again here later. Okay? So until then, ciao.